Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh to some of y'all and peace out to the rest of you. Hit the share button because the message is more important than the messenger. Welcome to the Manosphere Show of the Week, episode 42. And I want to start by giving a shout out to the other men of the Black Manosphere. Um, and specifically, oh, specifically Roger, who um, gave me the opportunity to do the one for this week. This week, in light of what's been a source of contention over the last week, and there's always something every week, anyway, or every month, I'm going to go ahead and tell both those in the black manosphere that are new and those that are black manosphere adjacent why the black manosphere was not outraged recently. I am referring to the arguments and debates centering a um, an interloper from the United States that moved across the Atlantic. Um, I'll start by stating that we in the black manosphere have been dealing with controversy um, and we're now being asked to hold another L for others' decisions. This has happened before when um, somebody was committing crimes of, a, of an intimate nature in other parts of the Americas and in Atlanta. And because he had a passport and his dad's black, he was blamed. Um, well, he was actually attributed to, he was rightly blamed if he did it, but he was attributed to the black manosphere specifically BMPTs, black male passport travelers. That is the umbrella term, including passport bros, passport gang, SYSBM, IBMOR. I'm not counting passport pookies in that. It's always, every time someone has to take an L or hold an L for something foul they've done, we are presented with that L to hold with them. An interloper, came along and said a while back actually that slavery was not really that bad and we heard it and one of the best kept secrets that we're not keeping a secret is that we didn't have anything to do with this interloper as a matter of fact we noticed several things a long time ago we noticed that this interloper had to leave the United States to go to the UK. We noticed that this interloper had stated certain family dysfunctions. We noticed that this interloper did not hide her opinions on things. And it's only due to a video put out by Black, Black Britisher yesterday to whom I want to give a shout out this time and give due credit for what he told us, that we learned that she actually, while not lying about her stance, as far as we know, did lie about how dumb she is. She's been deceptively playing ditzy, like, oh, I don't know. No, you knew. Because he handed you a book on camera. You knew. So that being said, we in the black manosphere were asked to hold this L as if we had uh, catapulted such an interloper into new heights. And it was not the black manosphere, at least not of North America, that did it. I'm telling you that the black manosphere of the United States and of Canada did not do that. I don't know if the black manosphere specifically of the UK did or not. You have to ask them. I don't know. I'm not of that black manosphere. I'm their sympathizer. That being said, the first time she said something like that centering around George Washington, we in the black manosphere had already ceased a lot of the ultra right, right wing conservative banjo playing antics of uh, 
that were not typical of us in 2020, but they were there. Now, I know they were there because I heard them. Um, but that had largely stopped and we had gotten our senses back and had begun to see uh, exactly again, even more clearly where the line was in between us and between Massa and Zaddy's manosphere. I say Massa sarcastically. I moved over here partially so that I would never have to take orders from them again. And I'm going to eventually leave here so that I'll never have to take orders from a non-black Arab again. Especially a better one. Or Levantine that wants to be one of the, the Zaddies. Them too. They're not organized. They're just not. I openly confess that my stance can be somewhat harsh. But this one time when my harsh stance led me to agree with the rest of the black manosphere. We saw this interloper as a Karen being a Karen. Right about gender, wrong about race. I've stated this before. But this one is not really about that interloper as much as it is about the black manosphere not being outraged when everyone else is and what the good reason is for that. If you choose to be hostile to this interloper, it's somewhat understandable if it's for the right reason, just like anything else. If you choose not to, then the best thing to do is to be dismissive. That's also understandable. We started off as being dismissive. We would replay certain points that agreed with us. And that was it. We chewed the meat and we spit out the bones from the very mother cuss word beginning. Because that's what makes the black manosphere the black manosphere. We have, him, we have made a conscious effort from the beginning to overwrite our emotions with logic. We have emotions because we're human, but we've made, had a conscious effort in our discussions to put logic first. This situation is akin to when you are walking up a mountain and you pass by and you are plotting the course. You're just trying to draw as much of a map of the mountain as you possibly can as you ascend to the mountain top and you go along the trail and you notice landmarks you can write down and put on the map and you chronicle what it is that you find and you see a particular rock and it stands out from other rocks alongside the trail but it is jagged and you know it's jagged because something you were carrying was cut along that rock and you say i'm glad i didn't step on it everybody notice that this rock here is very good at pointing the way but don't step on it. You will cut whatever it is. This rock don't care nothing about the scars on your back. But it's willing to point you in a right direction. And then as you move along, somebody taps you on the shoulder later. You turn around and that person that's already behind you is now pointing further even behind himself to point at that rock and say, there's this rock. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you said that the rock was facing north. Yeah. Well, that rock cut my feet. Dummy, we told y'all not to step on that rock. Don't put your weight on it. Just know what direction it's facing so that you can gauge the directions from there if it's cloudy out. That's what we're like right now. We're the one that was tapped on the shoulder after saying this rock is facing that direction, but it's jagged. Don't uh, step on it or put your weight on it. We're like that person that was tapped on the shoulder. Black YouTube adjacent to the black manosphere is like the one tapping us on the shoulder. Jumping up and down and all of this getting ultra excited over something over which we had no control and then saying that we put the rock there. We didn't put the rock there. That wasn't something we did. 
That wasn't something we would do. Put the rock there. Are you nuts? There's another thing, too, though, and I want y'all to keep this in mind. Not only had we already paid attention and we had largely been somewhat dismissal and meh about this particular interloper. But when this recent uh, surfacing of an interview, an unsavory or distasteful interview in the eyes of many, made it to the light of day. We still were not shocked and surprised because not only had we paid attention from the beginning, we had paid attention when a chameleon was featured on her show as a normal red pillar wear guest. We said, wait a minute, what's she doing there on her couch? So she flew all the way from North Carolina to London to sit down with this interloper. But we knew who she was because of how she had acted when she called the man angry inch for asking her a pointed question. She had resorted to everything against which she had been warning Western men. And here she was sitting on this interloper's couch in another country like nothing had happened, like we didn't see what we saw. That's what it is. And then there's more to that. We had been dealing with actual threats. And so this interloper did not go off on our radar as as much of a potential threat. Because we have been dealing with real, true, blue, dyed in the wool threats from amongst our own DNA sequence. Cynthia G, anyone? Crystalline Karazin. Who couldn't pander enough to her zaddy to keep him. That's not all. Divested Zealot whose avatar alone should have gotten her channel shut the uh, uh fought the shuck down and it didn't and all of their followers black woman's fear bossy empress who doesn't advocate hurting men openly but listen to her enough and you'll get it We've been dealing with real blue dyed in the wool threats. They've been setting our radar off for the longest. So forgive us if we weren't outraged enough to your liking by a particular interloper who hadn't said much of the same things as severely as the threats I've just named. It's not that we're coons and it's not that we don't care about our people at all it is that we already know that we black men in the west are separate as a people from the black western woman because she's been insistent upon that and because while they may say i don't like cynthia g's voice it's annoying they ain't shutting her down it's because even when some of these western sisters do come out and say, well, so-and-so was too far. They turn around and act like the same hyenas. That's why. That's what you're seeing. That's what you're facing. And that's why you're seeing it. And that's why you're facing it. I'm facing a situation in which I admit I can't, because of time, listen to a lot of long live streams and uploads. I don't have the kind of time. So when I do, I have to prioritize Edward Allen Anderson's and BGS's. The Roger Report and Dennis Sperling next. Usually Dennis Sperling is live going on his rants while I'm getting ready for work. So I have time to listen while I'm doing other things. I have to work seven hours and I'm not paid any extra for it. I've had to deal with um, a long stretch of unemployment and a bunch of other things that ate into the savings that I'd saved up just for something like this. And I'm not going to be able to make my daughter's graduation this coming summer. I'm not saying this to beg from you. I'm saying this to tell you that none of this was my fault. I planned 
And the way things actually turned out wound up setting me back as though I planned nothing. Matter of fact, if I hadn't planned like I did, I would have just been in the hole now. But there was no way I could have planned well enough to stay ahead no matter what happened. That wasn't an option. And I wouldn't accept anybody coming along and telling me, well, you know, Black Mind, you failed to plan for. No, I didn't. I did not. I planned for everything I could think of. Saved as much as I could possibly save while still being responsible in other ways. Guess what? I still got set back because of a decision a bunch of other folks made. And they didn't even all know each other and still work together just to put my black behind where I am now. F you very much. That's what the black manosphere is like. We don't see the future. We don't know what someone's going to say next and when they're going to say it. But we do have an idea what they ain't going to say. And we didn't expect much from the interloper whose choices have been blamed upon us. And now our lack of outrage is because we're not surprised. It's not because we just wholeheartedly agree all across the board. It's because we're not surprised. That's why. We've been dismissive. Some have come out to defend her because she was blamed for certain things uh, before what we know from somebody that worked with her before. Now, since his video came out yesterday, my time, I would say, no, there's no reason to cape for her at all. Like not even to, not even to try to defend her from false accusations from other people. Unless it's really strictly only about being fair and saying, nope, let's only blame her for what she's actually done. I don't really care. The point I'm making is that. Because some did this as individuals, she's now being. Uh attributed to us like we did this like we set her up prompted her to say this stuff and then made the phone call and arranged the interview between her and a guy with a spanish last name who claims to be italian for which there may or may not be a good reason i don't know in any case we're not outraged because we saw this i mean because we've already been past this we weren't surprised. And we're ahead of you who are outraged. Now, if you dislike it, that's one thing. But if you're outraged, like you're shocked, then we're ahead of you, period. End of story. I hope that answers your questions and satisfies you. And as always, I want to give a shout out to my supporters, those who supported me uh, through Patreon and Cash App while I was going through that rough uh, employment portion. Um, and those who have supported not only me through Cash App, the four of you know who you are, but <coughs> also those of you who have supported others. And there may come a time when I'll have the time and the funds to listen to everyone's long live streams and uploads and, and maybe even be better at helping us to prevent stuff like this maybe that day will come i don't know probably not but if i find myself in such a position i'll try to help prevent uh as much as i can these things in the future but this time when an argument not because the black manosphere doesn't care but because the black manosphere already covered this ground Thank you for listening. And as always, black heart, black mind, black out, assalamu alaikum and black heterosexual, non-select male power just because they don't like it. And black patriarch until extinction for judgment day. And thank you for flying on this special jet black airways flight with me. Episode 42 of Manosphere Show of the Week. And uh, keep jetting black with us until the wings and the wheels fall off. Justice forever.